Yeah. Greetings and welcome to another episode of Trippy Food. Today we are in San Pedro, California, and we are at the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. And we're here to, for their Meet the Grunion program. So we're going to find out all about grunion. We're going to uh, study a little bit about it. And then we're going to walk over to the beach. We're going to catch some grunion. And later on, we'll cook those things up and, uh, and see how they taste. So let's have some fun. So the Meet the Grunion program it consists of a talk and a movie that tells you a little bit about the grunion, their life, their lifespan, um, basically their range, well, anything you really wanted to know about grunion. So in addition to that, in the aquarium, they actually have grunion exhibits that you can check out and actually see the fish up close without having to go out on the beach and grab them yourself. Most of the exhibits here feature wildlife, fish that are common to the LA Basin or the LA Harbor area. Uh, I don't know if they have other things, but here's a like gigantic seahorse and I'm wondering, I'm wondering if these seahorses are native or not. So these, I can't tell if it's very large because the glass magnifies it or if they're, uh, they're actually very large, but these are Pacific seahorses and uh, they're actually related to pipefish. And these things are pretty big, pretty impressive. And these are some of the, uh, the shellfish found in the area. I would need these. So this is interesting. The next time you're out walking on Venice Beach Pier, this is all going on underneath you. Wow, this thing is disgusting. It's called a Pacific football fish. And uh, it looks like a deep sea angler. I'm not sure how, um, not sure how low they go, but that thing is ugly. This one is the triple wart sea devil, also a type of angler fish. That's a lot of calamari right there. Now, sign says this is a great white shark. It doesn't look that great to me. That's more like it. You are now looking into the gaping maw of a pelican. And here are your whales, obviously not to scale. Uh, my name is Matt, I meet some of the other staff as the evening progresses. 
thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, the first thing I'd like to ask you guys is I'd like to see a show of hands your first time ever here at New York. Awesome, excellent, thanks for coming out. Let me welcome you to our world famous Grinning program. Not exaggerating when I say that, I have the proof right here. This is May 1969, National Geographic, over 50 years ago. Right? National Geographic came down to about a 10 page spread on this very program you guys are taking part in tonight. We've been doing this for quite a long time. Our very first training program was in 1949. We haven't missed one since 1952. That's older than I am. So we've been doing this for quite a long time. I have a video I'm going to show you that's going to tell you all about the natural history of the grinding and what they do. My job up here tonight is letting you know what's going to happen on the beach. Uh, so when it's time to head down to the beach, we'll make an announcement. We'll gather everybody up in front of the firm. You want to follow a staff member down, you don't want to end up in the wrong spot. And only to get down, once we get you down to the beach, we're going to line you up parallel to the shore. And first, it's going to seem like you're kind of far away from the water, but please keep in mind that the tide's still coming up. We have to have room uh, on the beach for the tide to come in. And then what we want you to do is get settled. A lot of scientists believe the fish can sense vibration through the sand. So spread your blankets, chairs out, talk how you want, but keep the running around to a minimum. That should make for a better run. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to keep it dark. You definitely want to bring your flashlights down to the beach. We will be using those. But once we get down there, keep your flashlights off. Nice, dark, inviting beach should also make for a better run. Right? And then we're going to do the impossible, and that's to please everybody. You guys know how hard that is, right? Let's see a show of hands if you're here. Just want to see the grunion tonight. Just want to see the grunion. How many here are going to actually try and catch grunion tonight? Yeah, there's two groups there. So how do we do that? Here's what we do, right? If we see some fish, we'll ask you to turn your lights on. That's not your cue to go running forward, right? If you do that, you're going to blow the run for everybody else. Once you scare those first few fish to come ashore, you scare those back in the water, it shuts off the run, they won't come ashore, right? So what we want you to do is, you know, when we have your flashlights on, go ahead, turn your flashlights on, but stay where you are, right? Use your lights, not your feet. We'll get some looks at these guys. We'll turn them off after oh, a minute or so, right? And we'll go through a few phases of that, lights on and lights off. And what we're trying to do is get you guys some looks at the grunion, but we're also trying to build up the run. We're going to get more fish on the beach, right? The more fish we have on the beach, those of you guys that want to catch the fish, you'll have a better chance of catching those elusive grunion fish. So follow our lead out there. We're not trying to be bossy or dictatorial. It just makes for a better run, right? Say we've been doing this for quite a long time. We've seen it happen. Uh, another thing, what can you catch grunion with? Bare hands only, no gloves of any kind, no equipment of any kind, no nets. You can't scoop up in a bucket. Right? You can't tighten out your t-shirt. Use that. You can't even dig a trench in the sand. I hope they fall in there. That's all illegal. They're going to get all the all the advantage. Right? Uh, California Fish and Wildlife does occasionally send a work down to our programs. Uh, he would be within his right, right? a ticket. If you're catching fish and you don't have a fishing license, if you're 16 years above, or you're using something other than your bare hands. So please be careful about that. When we do let the crowd go, you guys are going to get up close to these fish, as close as uh, you want to get. Uh, but you're also at the water's edge, so keep an eye on the water. I've seen those little kids get run over when you start running away from those waves that come in. So keep an eye on that as well. Right? Okay, I'm also going to uh, take questions after. You can see me after the program, but right now I think a good time to start the movie. And I bet the movie will answer most of your questions. You guys, thanks for coming out tonight. Thanks for coming out. 
Alright, so now that I got you amped to hatch your own baby grunion fish, this is a tradition that we've been doing. You guys saw the movie that was only made, what, like 40, 50 years ago, right? We've been doing that since before that movie was made. This is the longest running program that we have here at Cabrillo Marine Aquarium, and I want to say it started in 1952, 1954. And so you are joining the millions of people that have come down to the aquarium to hatch their own baby grunion fish. But you also have to join those millions of people by being the ones that do the grunion dance before you hatch your baby grunion fish. So we're all going to do the grunion dance right now, okay? If we don't do the grunion dance, our baby grunion fish aren't going to hatch, okay? So I need the participation of everyone from 0 to 110, all right? That's everybody in our audience right here. And if not, then if you're 111, have a seat because you're awesome anyway, all right? Uh, but I'd love to have you participate anyway, all right? Are we ready to do the grinding dance? Everyone say yes. Yeah. Awesome. awesome, thank you so much. So what we're gonna do is you guys are gonna repeat after me. So if I if I do a hand motion like this and I say at the full moon. At the full moon. Oh, you guys are good. All right, you guys catch on real fast. Okay, so I'm gonna put the microphone down so I have complete use of my hands. All right, are we ready? Yeah. All right, at the full moon. At the full moon. Now, Mama Grunion digs in the sand. Dig in the sand. Ready? Dig, 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 dig. All right. Now we're gonna lay 3,000 eggs. 1,000 eggs. Ready? Whoosh. Whoosh. 2,000 eggs. Ready? Whoosh. 3,000 eggs. Ready? Whoosh. Mama Grunion comes over and gives Mama a hug. Give yourself a hug. Aww. All right. Now the Grunion fish say. Back to the ocean! Back to the ocean! Alright, now show me a little baby grunny fish inside of an egg. Little baby grunny fish inside of an egg. It takes 10 days to hatch out. Everyone count to 10. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Show me a high tide! Baby grunny fish hatch out! Back to the ocean! Once you get your jar, take a look at the sand. Second thing, once we add the water, see if you can find the eggs that are going to hatch. The eggs that are going to hatch will have the silver eyes in them, okay? And then start swirling. Those are the ones that you're going to watch. And once you start seeing one grunion egg hatch, then you can stop swirling and watch the rest of them hatch. I may spill it on you, it's just salt water. Okay. You're welcome. Anyone else need water? Alright, so what we're going to do right now, my friends, is we are going to come around and start collecting your baby food jars, okay? What we're going to do with them tonight is we are going to collect them, we're going to combine them into a bucket, and then when we go out to wash the grinding, we are going to release the baby grinding fish tonight as well. Okay, so we watch people hatch their own grunion, which is pretty exciting. You know, see the look at kids' faces as they see the grunion hatching. And it's going to be kind of quiet for a little while, so we're going to wander around the aquarium, check it out, take a look at what's going on. And then probably in about an hour or two, then everyone's going to head down to the beach. Now, some of you might remember that um, I was with my friend Eddie uh, for Bizarre Foods. We went out to Venice Beach, and we were looking for grunion at Venice Beach. And there were... It was sort of um, a rule of thumb on how to catch it. So basically what you want to do is, when the moon is full, uh, you're going to see the, them shining on the beach. When you see them shining on the beach, you're going to probably see the female, and then I mean, you're probably see the male that's wrapped around the female, and you just put your hand down flat, get some sand in there and grab it like that, because they're a little bit slippery and the sand helps you hold on to them. And then don't forget that the female's in the hole, so reach down, grab the female. and. Um, I will link the Bizarre Food episode at the end of this episode, uh, however I think the Travel Channel or whoever hosts that uh, actually charges a fee of something like, uh, like a dollar or so. But, uh, but you get to watch us taking Andrew Zimmer out for uh, Runyon Fishing. And um, that was the episode where I won the title of Runyon Whisperer.
We'll see if we, we'll see if we have the same luck tonight. Again, it's a crapshoot. You don't know what's going to happen out there. Um, sometimes you get, like we did that night, five grunion, and sometimes you get thousands. So we'll see. Okay, well it looks like it's about time, so let's head down to the beach and catch us some grunion. Okay, it's pretty dark. You can just see my shadow. All right, this everybody, is we... welcome to the beach. Welcome to Cabrillo Wait, Beach. We call this the outer beach. This is the open ocean side of We're Cabrillo Beach. The beach that you are standing on is a human-made beach. This is all former sediment that was at the bottom of the harbor that was dredged out when the harbor was first constructed, and then uh, the harbor. Okay, while uh, he's the, making the announcements, I'll kind of let you know what's going on. So, we're waiting for the tide to be at its highest point. So, we've seen some waves come in, and we've seen some fishes come in with that with our eyes without the lights. And then every once in a while, we'll use the lights, show the fish on the, on the beach. And um, when the fish, when there's enough of the fish on there based on us turning our lights on, then they're going to give us the word to go. Uh, we're nowhere near the edge of the water right now because we don't want to spook them. Have the uh, light rail back. We do ask that you leave your lights off for right now. Yeah. Yeah. Jesse! Jesse! All right, ladies and gentlemen, just to remind you, we do ask that you only take the amount of grunion that you are going to use. If you're not going to eat the grunion, please return the grunion to the ocean, or we do have a researcher that is collecting grunion this evening. He's on the far side of the bathhouse. He's not here to take the grunion from you. We are doing uh, research on parasites inside of grunion. Well, they're still running. There's still people on the beach behind me. I don't know if you can see the lights back there. That's about all you can see. It's so dark that it's really hard to see anything else there. And so, kind of catching these in the dark. I think I've got about 10 of these or so. There they are. 
Got about 10 of these, and these are going to make some nice uh, grunion rings. So uh, I get these home and get them cleaned up. Meantime, I'm going to check out the inner beach on the other side because I'm told that uh, there may be some grunion running over there too. So I'll check that out as well. Okay, well, we finally got home and uh, got into some nice, warm, dry clothes. Uh, I'm not saying that a certain YouTube host did a face plant in the Pacific Ocean while he was trying to catch some grunion. Let's just say that inertia, while you're running downhill to go after the grunion, has a tendency of bringing you forward and uh, letting you keep going. So that's what kind of what happened. And, uh, but I managed to save the grunion. And also, uh, there's two kids that um, that also gave me some extra grunion, so I had enough to make my grunion ring. So I don't know who they were. They didn't give me their names. If you're watching this, guys, uh, leave a comment down below and let me know who you are so I can give you a proper shout out. Thank you so much. Uh, I think we're going to have a nice batch of grunion rings, thanks to you. So in case there wasn't enough information at the aquarium, grunion are in the Sorcides family. So they're related to top smelts, which I guess is different than bottom smelts. Uh, so I, it's, it's in the smelt family. So their range is anywhere from Baja, California, up north to San Luis Obispo County. In March and April is observation months, so you can watch them spawn, but you can't catch them. And then May through August, uh, when they're running, uh, you can catch them. You need the fishing license to do so. So here's what we got. There's about 12 of those on there. I think they're going to make a, um, a decent batch of grunion rings. And so what we plan to do is we're going to cut the heads and tails off, uh, open them up, try to clean them up a little bit. I'm going to see if I can harvest some eggs and we'll try some grunion caviar. We'll see how that is. I uh, don't know if we're going to be able to do that, but, uh, but we'll try to squeeze some eggs out and see if they're in there. Uh, then we're, to make the grunion rings, we're going to uh, tie them together. So I have all the stuff for the grunion rings back here. And I kind of, uh, we'll show you the process on camera how we do it. Uh, I just recommend that if you're going to do that, find yourself a decent recipe for onion rings and you're just substituting the fish for the onions. So before we start, um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to cut the heads off. I'm going to try to scale them a little bit, um, cut the tails off and uh, soak them in buttermilk for about half an hour. So let me do that and then we'll get started on cooking them. Okay, so I'm going to give them a little squeeze here and that's milt coming out. So this is definitely a male. I'm not going to get any eggs out of this one. Okay, I'm going to cut off the head. I'm going to get those front fins. And that's not going away, so I'm going to use those. Grab the tail. And we'll start on the next ones. Now, I'm down to my last one, and uh, unfortunately they're all male. So I'm not getting any eggs today. That's okay. No grunion row for me today. Okay, I don't have to actually scale them, uh, but it's going to improve the taste a little bit. Basically, when you're frying them, the scales all come off. But, uh, you know, that's what we have there. And I'm going to open it up, cut that bottom fin off, run the knife down the middle, and... I'm not going to cut it completely in half, just so that it's open. Take out those innards. I'll do the rest and then uh, give them a quick rinse. Okay, now I'm going to put the buttermilk on them and they'll go in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. And then we'll get started on our grunion rings. I'm going to use a quarter cup of cornmeal and three quarters of a cup of flour, a teaspoon of paprika. 
It doesn't have to be exact, I'm just following in a recipe I found online for onion ring batter. I'm adding pepper to taste, maybe about a teaspoon. It's up to you, you don't even have to put the, the pepper in there, I just like the nice cracked pepper in there. And about a teaspoon of salt. Again, I'm just eyeballing this. A teaspoon of baking powder. One cup of club soda, and you can use sparkling water, that's fine. And the recipe calls for beer, uh, three quarters of a cup. I'm going to use this Hell das Blaud, I think I'm saying that right, which is deep blue. It's a lager, so hopefully it's light and won't overpower it. And then I'm going to whisk until it's nice and creamy. Put that aside and I'm going to put some panko breadcrumbs in a bowl and this is going to be the coating afterwards. I decided to use panko because I think it's going to give it a nice crunchier finish and then some flour to dredge that through. So I got three pieces that I'm going to assemble into a ring. They've come out of the buttermilk. I'm going to put them in the flour. Make sure they're completely coated. Shake off the extra flour. Give it a dip in the batter. And typically what you want to do when, when you put it in the batter, you want to let some of the batter drain off of that. But in the essence of time, I'm, I'm just going to go right into the panko breadcrumbs. I'm going to do all three pieces. Oops, forgot to dip. Oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to assemble these on the spoon. And basically what I'm doing is I'm putting the tail end into the head end of one of the other pieces. And I'm going to do that with all three pieces. Put them together. I don't have to fasten them. Once they go into the fryer, that will... Um, keep the position together. I'm going to form these into a ring. I'll just use two. Wait till that turns golden brown and we have our first grunion ring. Okay, again, I'm going to form a ring on the spoon. Narrow end into the wide end. I'll just use two pieces on this one. And it's going to be kind of more of an oval than a ring, but it'll be okay. Nice and golden brown, and out it goes. So here's our first two grunion rings. Probably have enough to make about four or five. Now I'm going to make a snack with the heads and fins. I'll just drop those into the oil the way they are. Wait till they brown up a little bit. I'll put those on a paper towel, let those drain, and then put some salt and pepper on them. I'll make a nice snack. Alrighty, here's our finished product. So uh, these are our grinding rings and uh, actually, you know, size, shape wise, they came out pretty good. They look nice and uh, crunchy. Um, yeah, these came out pretty good. I've actually made these before a long time ago. I think these are about comparable. So we'll see when we actually go to taste. We made them a little bit differently. There's some cornmeal in there, the panko breadcrumbs, etc. We'll see if that, uh, how that improves it. And I decided I was going to pair it with the beer that we used to make the beer batter, and which is the ABK Hell Das Blog, you know, whatever that that is. So it smells a little hoppy. Let's see. Little hair of the dog that bit you, or the fish that bit you.
That was a nice pour. Nice kind of amber color there. A lot of effervescence in there. Not as tangy as I thought. Um, very kind of weedish uh, kind of flavor. But uh, yeah, that's a nice beer. So we'll, we're pairing that with that. We're gonna taste that in there, I think. And then uh, I have my little side dish of my little uh, uh, sea crunchies, which are the heads and the fins. But I didn't want those to go to waste. So I really I hardly wasted anything. Well, I'll try these first. Head and fin. Just falls apart. It's like sea potato chips. Yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah, it's a nice looking dish as far as I can tell. Uh, let's try one of these. Let's go over the small one. Run your Oh. Oh my god, it's so good. It's actually light. It's not greasy. The panko breadcrumbs have a nice crunch to it. Nice touch. You taste a little bit of the cornmeal. You can actually taste a little bit of the bitterness from the buttermilk. Wow. It's a light white fish, white flaky white fish. Oh, it's really nice. Oh my God. I'd eat these all week. So again, we had like, I think it was like 11 or 12 of these, which gave us uh, four nice big size rings. That's really nice. And then we'll pair it with beer. Good beer, nice snack. What else could you want? So this makes getting sand up all in your nether regions as you submerge at the Pacific Ocean in quest of your grunion. This is really nice. So my advice to you is, you know, if you're not the kind you don't want to catch fish, you want to clean them, you know, all that fun stuff, just go and observe it because it is really, really, really something to see. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's too dark for us to show that to you, but uh, maybe some of the time we'll do that. But, uh, but definitely go out for a grunion run, even if it's just for observation, to see them flopping around the beach. It's really something amazing and uh, something that people in Southern California can really take advantage of. And then if you, uh, you have your fishing license and you want to give this a try, I recommend this. Uh, again, on Bizarre Foods, we just kind of, you know, dredged in flour, uh, threw it in the fryer and just ate it like that. And that's okay too. Um, but uh, we'll try to link that at the end. Again, I think uh, Travel Channel, charges a dollar or something on on that to see but we'll, we'll link it anyway so that, uh, that you can see the episode and Andrew Zimmer if you're watching this is kind of what I was proposing that night and sorry that didn't work out but you know had fun with it anyway so here we are we went to the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium we participated in the Meet the Grunion program we went out and caught Grunion came back made our Grunion rings it's a perfect night so give this a shot if you get a chance again uh, they run from March through August uh, you can only catch them from May through August, but it's definitely worth it. Get out there, do this, have some fun, and we'll see you soon. Mm. So good. Thanks for checking out Trippy Food. If you enjoyed watching that video half as much as I did making it, well then I enjoyed it twice as much as you did. And if that's the case, you'll probably like this video right here. And if not, check out this video right here. That one's a little bit different. Either way, leave a comment down below and be sure to subscribe by clicking on the trippy food icon right here. Glad you could make it and we hope to see you again soon.